space time and light in special relativity. How space, time, and light are related? What actually is light? Let's first revisit our hundred years understanding of light. Few hundreds of years ago, most scientists assumed that light had infinite speed, and assumed that signals transferred instantaneously. Since 1600s, scientists were able to demonstrate a finite light speed, the contribution likely attributed to Ole Romer, who first demonstrated in 1676 that light travels at a finite speed. He analyzed the planet Jupiter and its moon Io, particularly, the emerging time of Io during an eclipse. Io appeared to emerge earlier when the Earth is approaching Jupiter, then receding from it. Because one path is longer than the other. The difference was about 22 minutes according to Ole Romer's data. By that time, we do not know what is the nature of light. It seems to be moving very fast and traveling in a straight line, the understanding was pioneered by Huygens who believe that light is a wave. But why is it propagating? After 200 years, James Clerk Maxwell, who combined two seemingly distinct subjects, electricity and magnetism into electromagnetism. He predicted the phenomena of electromagnetic waves. A coupled, oscillating electromagnetic energy that allows it to propagate. Maxwell identifies this to be the nature of light. Scientists between 60s to 80s generally believed that there was a medium for the light wave to propagate which was known as luminiferous ether. In 1887, the Michelson-Morley experiment was conducted to test the speed of light. They tested in different orientation because ether was supposed to be moving with the Earth's rotation. And different orientation should give a different result. Surprisingly, the speed of light was recorded to be constant in all trials. Such a result was against most scientists' belief. Scientists wondered why does light have a constant speed, even when the apparatus was moving. In 1905, Einstein stood out and claimed that constant light speed is the fundamental of nature. What need to be explained, is actually how moving objects relate to each other. In Einstein's paper called, On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies, he introduced another postulate. Light is always propagated in empty space with a definite velocity c which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. This one step in the logic triggered a huge impact on our understanding of nature. Based on it, Einstein derived a new interpretation of space and time. The traditional understanding of physics assumed that time are the same for all object, which is unrelated to length measurement. Starting from accepting Michelson-Morley's result, Einstein denies this understanding. What is Einstein's way of understanding space and time so that, the speed of light and physics stay the same for a moving object? Einstein answered that with Lorentz's equations, which link space and time together. But he denies the existence of ether. And he denies universal stationary object. He thinks that every motion is observed relatively. Like these two marbles are stationary to each other. The courage to deny traditional physics leads him to special relativity, a theory that revolutionized physics. Time dilation. Suppose these two scientists conduct the Michelson-Morley experiment together. They found the time to finish one experiment to be the same. Now the spaceship takes off. Do you think they are the same? Scientists on Earth can deduce time on the spaceship by measuring light trips in the experiment. Time is light's travel distance divided by its speed. To scientist on Earth, light on spaceship traveled longer. And the speed of light has to be constant. Therefore each second on the spaceship has to mean longer, from the perspective of the Earth. What if the spaceship come back and two scientists compare the number of experiments they completed? This is known as twin paradox, which is historically illustrated using twin instead of a spaceship. The paradox is not addressed until scientist realizes the key role of acceleration in order to make the return. Length contraction is another phenomenon. 
It is less easy to understand without the mathematics. It basically says moving lengths are shorter relatively. A follow-up paper of special relativity has stated the mass and energy relation. Between stationary objects and moving objects, the mass measurement is also relative. For example, there are two identical objects. One is stationary and another is moving quickly. The scientist stays with the stationary object would find the moving object to be heavier. This leads to the famous E equals mc square equation on special relativity. Which also provides us the estimation to harness nuclear energy.